That's the uh, DSG cross slide setup. When it arrived, you couldn't actually wind the thing across with a. If you fitted the gib so that there was no sideways movement, you got about an inch and a half of movement that way, and then it'd start locking up. You fit it so that you can get a bit more movement, and you got way too much sideways movement. I've set it up as close as I can to zero side movement, and there's nothing I can feel. But I can't get it any tighter because the screw's got a kink in it, which gives you a tight spot as it's going down. It's nice and even now.
You've just got a very light spot here. But other than that, it's coming in okay. Oh, so we've scraped in the uh, the bottom of the cross slide. We know that's flat and, and the slides are complaining with each other. Uh, and we've got, uh, I think we've got three turns variation. So when it's sitting on the on the bed now, it'll pan around parallel. Uh, look, taking a look at the uh, saddle, we have taken a dimension from here to a dowel under here at both ends, and that end we know now is basically a thou further over. Measuring the the height down from the top of here to the uh, bearing face. We've got zero wear at that end. We've got somewhere just under half a thou. I've called it zero for now. And then three thou wear in this sort of section. Which is just as you expect because tool pressure's tool turning turning's here, tool pressure's being pushed down, that's where the wear is. That also corresponds with the highest area of wear on the uh, moving portion. Uh, so I've just put some blue onto the straight edge, uh, check that for flat and that, and then check these two just to see that I've got a reasonable face to work from. These have been, there's a very, very slight raised portion down each side and this middle piece has been relieved only slightly, but there's next to nothing there. And there's probably a thou, thou and a half there. I can just feel it. Um, I've checked with my feeler gauge with the slide on. And I've got about nine thou clearance. Whereas there was nothing before. So I, I'm aiming to take off basically. Nothing here. But it'll probably need a thou to clean it up or two. Which means five thou over there. Um, and what I'm going to try and do is keep the distance from this point down the same on this side. That will give that means then that I've, I've kept that plane in parallel or coplanar with that plane, which should mean it's in line with the sc screw shaft lead screw. So that's the first job. Get that one right. That's where the uh, fixed side goes, and then we can use that to print to the side um, but we've got a bit of hogging to do first to take off a couple of thou at that end down to nothing well I want to take it down so it's parallel with this and then take the whole length down another thou which will bring it parallel to that point and then we can mark it across waffle 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 Right, so uh, just scrape it, scraping in the saddle on this, um, well actually it's the cross slide element of the DSG uh, 13 inch lathe. I've roughed in the near side and I've checked by measuring from this position to the crown on the screw, having checked the diameter and it's there's less than a quarter of a thou wear on the tops. Checking across just to make sure that this is coplanar with the top of that, i.e. the centre line of the screw no reason why it w wouldn't be so that's my reference surface and i'm now checking this plane in relation to that plane i've roughed that in but only to get rid of the crap that was on there and roughly we are if we take these two as level this top right hand corner which is the far right hand side of when you're running it is three thou higher so i've got to basically step scrape that back now to bring parallel with this and then uh, then we can sit the cross slide on and start printing it from that because that's already set up printing 25 to 30 points per square inch um, the only other thing then is to set up the dovetail faces uh, where there's a bit of wear but I've got to remeasure it now that these are flat and the wear is taken out of here obviously that change in diameter will have affected been affected all right so uh that's my setup um one two three block mag mag block and that came from uh, keith fenner's walks on your box don't know who donated it but it's actually really nice nice and nicely well ground there's only one little dink on it uh i got an arm 
two because my others are only short, only four inches. I think these are eight, um, 15 quid. Uh, it needs a bit of a tickle up, but for purposes today, it's fine. And it's got a, a kind of fine adjust on it, although I'm not overly convinced about that one. I will be making up some fine adjust setups for the bottom. So, yeah, we're uh, progressing. Well, several hours of hacking away at it. That face is now true to the screw and true to the original machine faces under either end so that's back to the original alignment and that's that means flat that way not tipped and flat that way and not twisted so now i'm bringing in this one i've got three thou up uh, i've got a i know i've got a hump in the middle because i've just took two thou off the far side the old thing was basically twisted um this side being lower that side being higher uh, that side was high and that end was a bit low um, but anyway we're getting there now so I'm going to call it a day for the it's Sunday afternoon it's uh, half three I've been on it since nine um, yeah um, it's important that you remember that the original machine faces are a good reference certainly to within half a thou um, and given that all the others are, are of questionable reference even the screw is oval um, if I pick up a position on the thread here take a measurement from a pair of a block sat either side and span in it take a measurement rotate the screw I can get uh, different measurements all the way around um, just off one you know second thread in and it, that, that measurement is all over the shop down there, so the screw's not... I mean, it's pretty straight if I rotate it. There's a little bit of a lob. Yeah. Which don't help. There's a bushing sits on the end. Um, but yeah, it's uh, not ideal, but uh, what's important is when that, that end's seated in its bushing that the dimension from here across and down matches the same here then when the just when the nut is adjusted for the loss of material off these it doesn't bind up at one end or t'other yeah oh, well we've got the these two planes are now flat and true and coplanar so we've rechecked the dovetail widths now now when we checked originally i think we got three thou away variation between them now that these two planes are flat the full extent of the wear on the dovetails can be established so the widest point is this end and we got uh, if you're just looking at the thou forget the inches uh, 480 thou 478 478 474 sorry it goes 0 8 6 4 5 6 6 6 so translating that into where that ends minus four minus four minus four minus five minus six minus four minus two minus zero so obviously this ends the unworn bit I'm surprised that ends worn much at all but uh, it's showing it is four thou thinner so it must have done uh so we start scratching out the idea is to get this this side sorted first uh, <clears throat> and we need that end face two thou further that way than this face taking these as the datums uh, it measured a thou and thou and a half thou and three quarters when we started so i'm just going to aim for two thou once we've got this one done we then bring that one in parallel to it or coplanar to it well, that's took about three hours to get that to print up we've got reasonable contact surfaces i will make sure they're plenty deep the scrape so they get some oil in there as well um, checking the drop which is uh, I've got this basically is two thou under that and it's just it, that and it's just been uh, a case of keep taking it back until I've started to get a print on this section and then the measurements were the right uh, I could bugger about for another hour just to get rid of those two small spots, but they're not very big. Um, so yeah, I'm going to call that done. 
going to drop it on its back now and check the, the dimensions and see how much is going to come out of this side to get it parallel. Right, so we started out with a measurement of 480 and having cleaned up this side we're down to 477 at the widest point. Uh, basically we've took off between one and two thou all the way down to bring that line in. So we've got, uh, that's two thou an hour, that's three thou an hour, four, four, three, two, three. That one's possibly two and three quarters. It's not quite aligned. So yeah, uh, basically I've got to take a bit more off this front edge and uh, a bit off the far side and start squaring it all up. And my arms ache at the moment. Distracting. So we're just roughing out the uh, tape of give for the cross slide for the DSG. Um, first one was bottom side is just me making sure that I've got that angle set right. So roughed it, roughed off the worst of the casting, and then I've just dropped um, what is it? that thing over it to make sure that I've got the angle right. It's a little bit under 50 degrees. Um, this is my bearing face, which is going to be rubbing on the actual cross slide um, well it's fixed to the cross slide but that's the bearing face and the other one is the tapered face um, I've given myself a reference having machined that face I've then just took the top off so that I know that that plane is coplanar with that and then the sides are parallel so then the final job is to put the taper on from that end so I end up with a thick end and a the end of the uh, gibbs got a quarter twenty uh, with, with thread down about inch and there's a uh, I don't think they're, they are the original adjustment screws but I had to drill it on the lathe um, just to get the length in so held that in held the part in the tool post and drilled it through next job's uh, tickle up the face that's the uh, DSG cross slide set up when it arrived, you couldn't actually wind the thing across with a... If you fitted the gib so that there was no sideways movement, you got about inch and a half of movement that way, and then it'd start locking up. You fit it so that you can get a bit more movement and you got way too much sideways movement. I've set it up as close as I can to zero side movement, and there's nothing I can feel but I can't get it any tighter because the screw's got a kink in it, which gives you a tight spot as it's going down. It's nice and even now.
the uh, there's a backlash nut arrangement so you've got the pro the actual nut under there held in a, a recess and then another secondary nut here and you adjust the gap between them by adjusting that thickness of that shim or at least that what should have been the plan um i think that shim's wrong anyway uh, just to get it so it doesn't bind i've got a pack of little shims in there they really want replacing the uh, owner shimmed it out with some cardboard and bits of brass uh, it really wants a new, new piece making up uh, and that is basically set as i understand it at the pitch plus um and then you just keep grinding a bit off and bring it down so these are only finger tight at the moment any tighter and it's kinking it around because it wants proper shim behind it so yeah gibbs in it's got a bit of adjustment still um, I've left this end long, which it was originally. Um, it, no reason it can't be sh cut off, but uh, that extra bit of length, when it's in its forward position, it's just giving a bit more resistance to stop it screw screwing around. Oh yeah. Can't find a fitting that went in there. I don't think I actually got it, but because uh, the owner brought me the screw after I'd after I'd started, and I spent about two hours straightening the screw to get it to the point where I'd actually get the thing to track up and down. There's the old gib. Um, the thickness of it there. I uh, was twenty twenty two thou short so the whole gear actually ended up a back back here somewhere so it was either sh shim the arse end of it which probably would have been a much quicker um job or make a new one right just waiting for the client to come and collect now